Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here, and welcome to the top five features of Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. So yes, Android 4.2 is still Jelly Bean, just like Android 4.1 was. It's just a minor 0.1 update. But in this 0.1 update, you do get at least five, if not more, major feature updates that are at least noteworthy. So I'm gonna be going through the top five today. Go ahead and leave your number one down below, the like button on this video, if you have a number one already. But uh, yeah, you'll be able to get this update on the Nexus 4 right out the box, on the Nexus 10 tablet right out the box, and uh, it should be rolling out over the air to the Galaxy Nexus and the uh, lucky Nexus 7 tablet, and of course a couple other devices later in the future. So keep your eye on the news to find out if your device will get it. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this countdown. Number five is the new lock screen in Android 4.2. And I put new in quotes because it's a very minor update, but it's an update. So in the new lock screen, it's kind of cool because you can swipe the entire lock screen to the side to get to the camera and take pictures and video from there. Or you can swipe the entire lock screen to the other side and visit your widgets. And this is where you'll be able to get information before even unlocking the phone. It looks kind of cool. You can add some uh, clocks, you can add a calendar widget, and probably some third-party widget support later down the road. But to be honest, it feels a little bit half-baked right now because you can only add one widget per swipe. So you can have a calendar, but then if you want your clock, you have to go another widgets, which will be on a new page, so you have to swipe again to get to the next widget. But honestly, it looks pretty cool. I'll probably just have my calendar on my next swipe from the lock screen. And that's pretty cool that you can have that information there. Number four is gesture typing in the new keyboard. Now they call it gesture typing or gesture typing apparently is how it's supposed to be said. But basically if you've heard of swipe for Android already, it never arrived in the Play Store, but it allowed you to swipe from letter to letter and then let go and the word that you swiped across the screen would appear there. Google has done this exact same thing with some enhancements in a stock Android keyboard. So you can swipe across the letters you want to make a word and as you're swiping, it'll update the preview of the word it thinks you're going to type. And when you let go, that word will appear in the text box. So you can type really, really fast, obviously, with this new swiping method, rather than typing like a regular hunt and peck style. And uh, I've actually used swipe a lot before this, so having it in a stock Android keyboard is a big deal, and I'll definitely be using it a lot. It's really fast, really cool feature, and of course, it still looks good. Number three is quick settings. You probably saw this coming already. Quick settings is accessible in more than one way. You can access it by swiping down the notification bar with one finger and tapping the quick settings button, or you can swipe down with two fingers. On a tablet, you can swipe down the left-hand side for regular notifications, or swipe down the right-hand side for your quick settings. Your quick settings give you access to all sorts of really neat, convenient features. So for example, if you're on a tablet, your multiple user account support is there. You have a, a, a unique 1% battery indicator, so your battery percentage is there. You have quick access to your brightness, your GPS, your Bluetooth. All your different toggles are there, and once you tap the brightness, you'll get a little slider. So you never have to enter the actual settings of Android. You can just enter your quick settings right there. And if you do want to enter the actual settings of Android, there's also a button in quick settings to get to the full settings. So I think this is really neat. I've been uh, talking about this in my Super Nexus video. I mentioned that this was baked into some other previous ROMs for Android, like Sanage and Mod and AOKP. But now it is in stock Android. You don't have to root or do anything fancy. Oh, I just hit the microphone. <laughs> you don't have to do anything fancy to get the quick settings now. It is built into Android. You don't have to go crazy out of your way to get it. So that's a nice touch. Number two is the little things. And I actually said this in my Android 4.1 video, the little things. There are so many little things in Jelly Bean that just made it more polished, a more complete feeling user experience. And Android 4.2 also has some new little things. For example, in Gmail 4.2, you can finally now pinch to zoom rich HTML emails you can check out the new Google Now improvements, which will integrate with Gmail and pick up on, you know, the weather in places you might be traveling or your hotel room reservation or a package you might be tracking. Also new in Android 4.2 is something called Daydream, which is basically a screensaver for your phone, which is, I don't know, it's cool. I wouldn't use it because that seems like a battery killer, but if you have some cool pictures in your gallery, you can use it. Also there is, like I said, multiple user account support on tablets. So you can have Angry Birds on one account and uh, some Angry Birds Piggies on another account. And when you switch over to the Angry Birds Piggies uh, account, you'll probably be on a different level, so it'll remember what level you're on. It's very, very cool. Uh, it does use more storage though, so make sure you get a higher end tablet, maybe a 16 or 32 gig Nexus tablet, and you'll be able to love user account support. There's also wireless display settings and a whole bunch of other bug fixes and performance increases. Project Butter is still there. It's still buttery smooth as usual. So there are a ton of new things that make Android 4.2 Jelly Bean just as lovable as the first iteration. And last but not least, finally, the number one new feature in Android 4.2, you probably saw this coming already, 
is the new camera, the new user interface, the new features, everything about that new camera and gallery. The new user interface of the camera is pretty simple. Uh, you have a new focus ring, so it's green when you're focused, red when you're not, and you can tap to focus like usual. And also you can access your settings in the camera just by tapping in the middle and swiping outwards to whichever setting you want to adjust. So you can adjust your flash or your exposure settings or your location settings or even what white balance you're using just by swiping over the correct setting and it'll adjust it automatically. You can also change uh, storage location and image size. Moving right on up to video mode, you can still take 1080p video if your phone supports it and there's still time lapse. And then moving up from that, there is panorama photos, which lets you take uh, panoramas in both horizontal and portrait mode. So whichever way you hold your phone, you can take panoramas that way. And then moving on up from that, Photosphere. When you turn Photosphere on, you'll be able to line it up and basically stitch a whole bunch of photos together in a 360 degree panorama to create a massive submersive image, 30, 40 megapixels in size and full of detail. And once you share it, you'll have the ability to view it just like you're standing in the same place that the photo was taken. You can share this photosphere as a regular, really, really wide image, but that doesn't always look so great on like Twitter and Facebook where I've been sharing them. So if you share it on Google Plus on the desktop site, there's actually a photosphere viewer, which allows you to look up and down and around the image just like Google Street View. And also in the new gallery, you can do that as well. So if you have a new photosphere on the gallery, you tap the photosphere button and it'll just zoom you right in and you can start taking a look at that new image you took up, down, left, right, again, just like you're standing there in Google Street View. The new gallery also has some interesting and good new features, like you can add these Instagram-like effects. If you're into that kind of thing, you can instantly crop or adjust uh, the rotation of images. So there's some quick image editing features in there, and that's definitely helpful if you edit stuff on the fly. Uh, but overall, the new gallery is also a lot faster, I noticed. I was impressed with the performance. So the new camera and gallery is awesome in Android 4.2. Also, just a tip for people taking photo spheres, since I figured while I'm here, I'll show you guys. A lot of people, when you're taking panoramas, it'll be okay to swing your phone around like this and not really keep it in the same spot. But when you're taking a photo sphere, you'll notice when you're looking at a Google Maps photo sphere, it's literally as if you're standing with your head in space and looking around on a swivel. So when you're taking a photo sphere, try to keep the camera lens, or at least the camera, in the same place. So instead of looking up and down all crazy like that, which looks a little weird anyway, you can just keep the camera in place and tilt it up and tilt it to the side and pivot it around to capture the whole photo sphere. And once you're done, you'll notice that gets the stitching a lot better. You won't have as many things crossed over or looking a little bit weird. So I'll try to share the better panoramas and photo spheres that I take on Google Plus in the near future. So if you're ready for those, go ahead and give this video a plus one or a thumbs up. Uh, and if you enjoy the whole video, of course, feel free to subscribe because there will be more like it in the near future. Either way, feel free to leave your number one feature. I was in between uh, the camera and the new keyboard for being my number one feature, but I went with the new camera because it has that wow factor. But I definitely love the new keyboard as well. Either way, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.